thousands of years ago there was a king called Janaka he had attained the highest knowledge but even after that he was curious he wanted to know more there was a little curiosity in him. but he was fully engaged in all the regular activity of the kingdom and huh? so one day he was sitting in the kingdom in the court in the evening and then there were people were talking about something some problem here reports were being read you know the reports are read from different places when he was listening it listening to it he get he started nodding dozing off so he dozed off for a few minutes when he dozed he dreamt he must have even snored a little bit in the dream he saw that his whole kingdom was flooded and there was famine in other parts and there was nothing there was loss to grains and fields and cattle everything was in a loss and he became a pauper and he found himself roaming from street to street so hungry and he wanted a piece of bread he asked everybody nobody had a piece of roti chapati not bread <laughs> So and finally somebody gave him a, a dry bread piece of roti and he took it and there was this rule for a householder the dharma that when a householder is going to eat something if someone else is around he cannot eat by himself he has to give it to them and then eat this was a law then those days huh? he was afraid because he has only one roti and if he sees somebody he has to share with them <laughs> So he he was hiding his roti underneath his robe and he found some place where there was nobody and then he was about to go and eat that piece of roti at that moment a eagle came and just took the roti also off his hand at this moment he could not tolerate he shouted ha when he shouted ha he opened his eyes his he came out of his sleep and he saw he's in the court and there are people it's full of people his hunger was still in the stomach he still felt that hungry he was very hungry but then he got confused now which is real maybe this i am dreaming is that real or this real he got concerned about this what is reality and he was one who would never leave questions very easily So he called all the scholars in the kingdom and asked them the solution. Everybody gave some answers. He was not satisfied at all. No answer could satisfy him. Then someone whispered in him, "There is one man called Ashtavakra. You should approach him. He was the Brahma Jnani, who knoweer of the Brahman." And then he was invited. to the court so ashtavakra was brought to the palace with all honor many people thought what this man he doesn't even look presentable and he is going to teach the highest knowledge to the king this man ashtavakra his body was bent in eight places i mean he had eight deformities in his body his legs were one was long one was short like the hands one was long one there were so many knots in his body eight knots that's why he, the name came to him ashtavakra means the man with eight knots but janaka was far sighted person he could recognize the glow the light you know it is very difficult for people to recognize the truth and reality people recognize pomp and show cuz eyes are on just the outer i sara unable to see the light or the life which is beyond which is beneath which is deep inside then ashtavakra tells there is a conversation between janak and ashtavakra this is the most unique conversation that has taken place on this planet the discussion between ashtavakra and janaka is a very unique phenomenon there was someone who has enjoyed the peak of the life 
and wanting to know about the self about the reality and there is someone who has risen to the pinnacle of existence and telling them what the reality is that is called ashtavakra geeta geeta means the song of ashtavakra krishna gave the geeta to arjuna in the battlefield when amidst all chaos here janaka was given the geeta so this geeta took place in a royal residence in a very peaceful joyful atmosphere so ashtavakra geeta is not for for someone who has not at, done anything started in the path for someone who has already started the path this opens up many avenues for brahma gyan the biggest knowledge the ultimate knowledge we require certain things what are these certain things to begin with a disciplined person only can be given this knowledge discipline in what way someone who has reverence for life discipline here is listening to your body not listening to your fantasies you have eaten your stomach is full but something has come a burfi or gulab jamun or mango milk shake <laughs> now your tongue says no i should have a little more of that and you drink a little more and next day you are flat in your bed <laughs> this we have not listened to our body but we have been carried away by our tongue body has its own discipline if you just listen to the body that is enough certain amount of discipline is essential for body number 2 in the words in speech do not speak any word that would create turbulence and turmoil in other minds from your side even if you don't speak some people get turbulent that you are not responsible one whose words are cultured whose speech is cultured they are eligible for ashtavakra geeta one who do not even at the moment of highest peak of anger cannot utter words which are unpleasant words which would which would be like arrows this is the second discipline discipline in words you will see that when you start with that you will not get a chance to speak harsh words in your life just a little tilt in your tone is sufficient enough you don't have to yell at people just a tilt in the tone of your voice will do the job if it is required somewhere here and there the things doesn't go huh? faster smoother and then we feel we must show some anger even in the showing of anger there is no need to use any harsh words it will happen the situation happens all around you like that but see most of us our tongue is so it say the tongue does not have a bone that is true that is how it goes in all directions up and down and right and left we slap people right and left by our tongue this is misusing the power of speech we have been endowed with a power of speech 
not to create turbulence, but to bring peace in the minds. Purpose of words is to create silence, but our words go like stones and hit the silent mind, create turbulence all over. Words are there to bless people, bring peace in the world. So from today, take this, oh, everyone, not to speak any harsh words for five days. Let us see what happens. The world will not fall on our head. Nobody is going to do any big harm to us. Nothing will happen. You'll find, in fact, it is so nourishing, so enriching to life. Purity of speech, culturing of speech. Hmm? Third one, culturing the mind. One who has never meditated has no right even to touch the book of Ashtavakra. One who has never experienced stillness of the mind at any time, even a few minutes, few hours. One who has not had restful alertness should not even touch this book or should not even go anywhere near this knowledge because then it becomes dangerous. Dangerous in the sense one can easily make a concept of this. It can give a false notion in the mind of a person without knowing that I know it all. This has happened, unfortunately, to many people who are good seekers, sincere seekers, but have studied a little bit here and there, heard a little bit here and there, read some books, and they get into an impression, I know better than you all. Or I know it all. No doubt an ignorant person is ignorant, but a person who thinks he is knowledgeable is more ignorant. So keep this as, let us keep this as our discipline. Huh? One thing, we do some exercise every day and eat as much as we need. Discipline of the body, purity of the body, take bath, every day and all that thing what we do regularly and then not to speak any harsh word to anybody what they will do they will put you on the cross somebody is going to crucify you even then you don't speak any word any bad word nothing will happen like that purity of speech no? and then Meditation. Hmm? At meditation hours, don't do anything else. If a laundry and meditation preference comes, you know, most of you will go to laundry. Because you say, oh, I have to do my laundry, it's all in the bucket. Meditation I can do tomorrow, doesn't matter. Anyway, I go and sit there, thoughts come, nothing happens. Why <laughs> to waste time, let me do my laundry. Just observe, just ask yourself if it is a choice between meditation and eating, what you would do? Dinner time better I eat it, I'll meditate a little later. I'm not saying this is right, this is wrong, you shouldn't do that. I'm saying be aware of this, what is happening. Don't judge yourself, oh I'm a bad person, I'm not disciplined. Very necessary. Never say that you are a bad person. This is, you are disqualifying in your very first step. Hmm? You are tearing down your own application. Your own application form, you are tearing it off. If you say you are a bad person, you are not bad. <laughs>